In this video, we're going to show how you can turn a button on a UX component into a split button. So you can see here we have a simple button over here. Uh, we actually have three buttons, but the top button it has been defined as a split button. You can see when I give focus to the button, we actually see two separate hit targets, the button itself and then a drop-down arrow. And when I click on the button, you can see that my event handler tells me that I've clicked on the normal part of the button, but if I click on the down arrow, my event handler tells me that I've clicked on the split part of the button. So let's go now and see how we set that up and then go back and look at a common use case for a split button. So first we'll go back to design mode and look at our button over here and we can see that for the button itself we've specified that the button has a drop down icon and then we've also specified that we want to display as a split button. So this display as split button option is only visible if you've specified that you'd like the uh, drop down icon. So if I go back now you can see that the button just looks like a regular button but let's turn that back on again. So now we have a split button. Then you can see here that in the help here for the uh, split button it tells you that in the event handler you can refer to arguments 1 which will either be set to split or normal. So that's how you know which portion of the button that you've clicked on. It also tells you that you need to put your event handler in the click event and not the abstract on click event. So we'll go here and look at our on click event here and we can see that we're simply going to alert arguments one which tells us which portion of the button that we've clicked on. So basically here we have our split button click over there and there's the uh, arguments one reporting that we've clicked on the split portion and then there's the arguments one reporting that we've clicked on the normal portion. Now oftentimes when you click on the down arrow you're going to do something like open a pop-up window or something like that and you'd like the button to show in a pressed state while that pop-up window is open. So you can see here we can click this button here to set the state of the button to be pressed and this is how we set the state of the button to be unpressed and if we go look at the code on those two event handlers you can see here that all we've done is we've gotten a pointer to the button object itself and then also gotten a pointer to the element, the HTML element and we called the set state method of the button object passing in two parameters, the element of the button and then either true or false. So this is sort of the background on a split button. Let's go take a look now at a real use case for it. So you can see here we have um, another split button here in this UX component. Um, this time we're using the iOS style, not mode blue that we used over there. And you can see that we've got a button over here and if I press the button it says run the default action. But if I go now and click the down arrow we're getting a menu now that says which action do I want. So I'm going to go here and choose action 1. So watch what happens to the text in the button after I choose action 1. So we get an alert telling us that we need to run action 1. So we would call the JavaScript now that's appropriate for action 1. But not notice now that the button text has been changed to action 1. So now the next time I'd like to select this action 1 I can just click the button and it's now a single click action. So if I go now to say action 3, we've now set this button state so that the user can select action 3 with now a single click. So this split button is very similar to something for example on the web control panel where we have a split button here and you can choose different components and when you choose for example say A5W page, the uh, button itself now remembers that you chose A5W page and that's now the state of the button for all future selections. So now let's go back and take a look at how this split button was set up to behave in this manner. So I'm going to pause now and pick this up in the next video. So we're continuing now with our video on how the split button here was set up. So we'll go back to our design mode right now and we'll go over now to the controls and then we'll look at our button here. So again remember that the event handler on click event not the abstract click and we can see that in the on click event what we're doing over here is first of all we're going to get the button ID so the reason that we've done this is that that just allows us to make the uh, code uh, more generic so this dot ID is going to return the full ID of the button and the naming convention that the UX component uses is the component alias 
and then dot v dot r one and then the uh, button ID. So what we do to get the button ID is we just do a JavaScript split on this dot ID and we basically take all the text after v dot r one. So that's going to give us button one. So now we have button ID and it's equal to button one. So then we say here yeah, if the user clicked on the split portion of the uh, button then what we want to do is we want to get a pointer to the button so now we've got a pointer to the button and then we run this action called show menu and we pass in Ellie and the reason that we pass in Ellie when we run this action is that this action is defined to display a drop-down menu below the button so it needs to know where the button is so that's why we pass in this optional argument to the run action command so now let's go take a look at how this run action show menu command is defined so we'll go back now to menu and then we'll go to actions and then we'll go to edit the action and we can see that the action is just a simple menu that has in it action one action two action three and the on-click event for each action is a JavaScript function which we defined and we'll go and take a look at this function called uh, set split menu choices and we pass in the name of the button so this is button one and then the action so action one is called there and then for action two it's the same function but we pass in action two etc so now basically let's go take a look at what happens when that uh, set action function execute go back here and uh, quickly look I forgot what the action name was so go back to JavaScript actions and then edit again and then go back here apologize for this and we see here that the action is called set split menu choice okay so so we can continue now so go back to our JavaScript so here we have a set split menu choice and uh, we passed in the button ID and also the action name so the first thing we want to do is get a pointer to the button object itself so we call the get control method and pass in uh, button ID so now we have a pointer to the button object and then we call the button objects set content method this allows us to update the text and image and bubble help for the button portion the normal portion of the button so here we're going to set the HTML to action name which was passed in we set that bubble help to help for action and we set the icon to a null we could set the icon to something that we wanted and then we actually store the name of the action that was selected in a variable in the button object and we do that so that the next time when the user clicks on the button we can find out what the current state of the button is and then we also want to execute the action that the button just selected so we call the button click method passing in button ID and we do that in a set timeout of 10 milliseconds just to give the menu itself time to close down so let's pause now and carry on with the uh, description so we're continuing now with our description of how the split button was set up and let's go back now to controls and then look at the else condition over here so this is what happens when the user clicks on the split portion of the button what we're doing over here is we're updating the button portion of the button to say action one or action two or action three on the other hand if the user clicks on the button itself we need to know which action to run so we get a pointer to the button and then we check to see whether this variable called button underbar state which was set when we went through this path has been defined if it has been defined then we're going to execute the action that corresponds to action one action two or action three and if it hasn't been defined then we're going to just run the default action so here we have it again we click here we haven't made any selection from the menu so it says run the default action but now we can see we can go back now and every time we click the button now we basically execute the appropriate action so the ability to create split buttons in the UX component is a powerful addition to the button object in Alpha Anywhere thank you very much for watching